Today, class, we're going to discuss magic of Nate Leipzig. Leipzig was a friend and mentor to Di Vernon, to uh, Fred Keating, to John Mulhall, and many other magicians. He was <clears throat> well known in vaudeville, he was well known in the theatrical uh, New York uh, society there. He was a member of the Lambs Club, and he uh, traveled throughout the world, he performed before, there's a picture of Leipzig right here. He performed before the crown heads of Europe and all those kinds of things, so he was really well known and well loved in his time. And uh, I, he's always been a favorite of mine, and he's somebody that I had the opportunity to discuss <clears throat> with Di Vernon on several occasions, and so I'm going to go over with you some of the things that uh, Vernon and I used to discuss. These are the tricks that appeal to me. A lot of these are in the chapter Coin Quickies. Now, you'll notice this book has a uh, white dust jacket. This is the only book I've ever received that had a dust jacket for the dust jacket. So underneath here is the kind of green one you may be more accustomed to seeing. But I've always kept this uh, protective cover on it, and then I have a protective cover on that. So that'll give you some indication of just how much I like Leipzig. I don't know why that is exactly, but uh, his stuff has always attracted me, particularly the quick tricks he did, which I found uh, very convenient for me to do at work. I used to uh, be an engineer, and uh, you can't pull out a deck of cards uh, in the middle of the day at work without getting a lot of uh, heat from your boss. But uh, you can sneak in a coin quickie here and there and no one will really notice it uh, or pay much attention or get as angry as they would with cards. <clears throat> so we're going to go over those one at a time. I'm just going to perform them for you. Of course, I can't do them as well as Leipzig. I can't do them as well as Vernon. There's a couple that I'll point out to you that Vernon himself had trouble doing and uh, so we'll go through that. The reason I'm doing this is because I think that uh, Leipzig and these tricks don't get the attention they deserve. I've been around magic and magicians for half a century and I've very seldom seen any of these tricks I'm about to show you performed. They're not particularly hard or I wouldn't be able to do them at all. And uh, as I say, they're close up, they're quick, and they're unusual for the most part. <clears throat> so, let's get started. Thank you. You know, over the years, magicians have come up with a lot of different methods for banishing a thimble. Di Vernon used to do it like this, sometimes. John Ramsey kind of used that kind of gesture when he did it. The thimble has to come back somehow. Leipzig's vanish of a thimble was different than the way typically used by magicians. He used just the two middle fingers. Most magicians use the whole hand like this, but Leipzig had big hands and big fingers, and so, you know, he just had it in there like that, maybe a tap, and the thimble was gone. Let's talk about Leipzig's stop trick, which is, uh, I think, has an explanation of questionable validity in the book. Um, and let's just say that, that, did you stop me here? This is the card that you want. Can you see that? Show you like that. So now, you got to trust me, okay? I have no idea where your card is. I don't even care where your card is. Here's what we're going to do. I give you the pack, and you start counting cards into my hand. Okay, at any point in this deal, you can, you can even put blocks of cards in my hand. I don't care. You just keep putting cards out over and over and over again. At some point, you say, stop. I say, oh. Right there, you say yes, and I say, do you want this one or this one? You say this one, that's your card. One of my favorite things that Nate Leipzig used to do was his routine with a cane called a few grips. Now this is explained to some extent in the uh, Di Vernon's tribute to Nate Leipzig, but I've uh, investigated it as much as I can and come up with uh, six different ways to make a cane appear to your, adhere to your hand. So let me just start with, with one that I made it myself. Kind of came to me in a vision. I thought, wouldn't it be neat if I could do this? And, you know, I found out that, that I could. I'm not even sure how that works. Now. 
another thing that Leipzig did was this, which is kind of a uh, offshoot of the thing that magicians might do with a pencil, but I know he did this because I have a, a photograph of him doing it from a newspaper. And then we have a little film of Leipzig, so perhaps his whole routine was filmed, but I know that he did this kind of thing. The cane appears to adhere to his hand and then lifts up like this. So I call that the Leipzig lift. In one of Charlie Miller's Magicana uh, columns, he had a trick by Carl Stenquist, which uh, relied on uh, something a little bit extra to make it work, but I decided that Gee, maybe I could do this, this thing where it adheres to the thumbs just with the cane itself. And it turned out that I could. In the Vernon book, I don't think this is explained right, but it's, it's actually the most secure uh, way to hold the cane. It's really solid there, and it's kind of a neat thing. So uh, I tend to almost always do this right toward the end of the routine and then for the very end for the very end we'll do this where the hands move along the cane and the hand is extended just like this. Thank you. One thing that always gave Vernon uh, trouble, and he liked the way I did it, was the thumb roll that Leipzig did. I got this from Vernon's book, so he understood the principle, I think, but he kind of confused it a little bit with a method that T. Nelson Downs used to produce a coin, and I'll show you that a little bit later. Charlie Miller saw me do this and wanted me to move my hands consistently further apart until they got to a certain point. I think it was right about here, and that's where the the viewer can see it without having to look from hand to hand. If you get it way out here, they have to look from hand to hand. If you get it way in too close, maybe that's a problem. So Charlie liked it right about there. <clears throat> Another item that Diver had a little trouble with himself was uh, this returning coin, which Leipzig did like this. Now, it depends on the surface that you do it on. And uh, if, you, if you put it on a paper or some types of harder surface you can get the coin to skid let me see if I can do that so that just a little bit there but here we'll try it again there you hear that it's kind of skidded for a second there that's pretty good now Vernon I also like to try to do this method where you hit down like this, the coin shoots out and comes back. <clears throat> he was doing it one night, he couldn't do it. I picked up the coin, I did it perfectly. It's the only time in my entire life it ever worked. Now, uh, of course, Leipzig liked to use to balance a coin onto his hand like this. I do it on my first and second finger. He did it on his second and third fingers. Vernon had his own method uh, right like this coin balances in the middle of the palm. When Leipzig did it, Vernon said he just tipped it up like this, which is very hard to do, but you can kind of approximate it like this. A lot of people think that's done with a pin or something. I'm full of magicians with this. There you go. Vanishes. Another one that Vernon liked a lot that Leipzig did uh, fairly frequently, and so did Vernon, and so do I. It's called Right There. In this one, the coin is pushed into the hand like that, it disappears, it's gone, it's gone. Here's the Downs production that Vernon taught me. One of the things that Di Vernon liked to do was Nate Leipzig's slow motion coin vanish. I would learned this from Henry Hayes' book, The Amateur Magician's Handbook, but Vernon didn't think it was quite explained correctly in there. So I'll try to approximate the way Vernon did it if I can. He, he also mentioned that Leipzig used to kind of wiggle the coin like this. It made it look like, you know, like it was bending, but it was just like held at the very fingertips. So it kind of gives it a nice touch, I think, when you do that. The 
Professor Di Vernon did this next trick to perfection. And I saw him do it on many, many occasions, and I never tired of watching it. He began by kind of clinking the coins together like this. There you go. One of the things that I saw Di Vernon perform many times at the Magic Castle was Leipzig's coin fold. He did it on me several times. Now, unfortunately, in order to do it at the castle, he often picked up on the castle table napkins, and it's pretty hard to do it with a table napkin. You need a paper that's um, a little stiffer. It just works out better. But what Vernon liked about this was Leipzig's premise that the coin was constantly um, seen and felt by the spectator. So, so here you see it right there, and they'd say, can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? The guy'd say, yeah, he feels it. Right? You fold this over like this so that the coin is trapped. It's in there. <coughs> feel it? The guy feels it. Yeah, yeah, I feel it. So now, and uh, Vernon would uh, do this on me, and so I felt the coin many times, and I would have to say, yeah, yeah, I feel it. So, uh, you feel it in there? Can you feel it? Feel it? The guy feels it, you know, and he says, yeah, yeah, I feel it. So, um, you fold it one last time like this, get the coin really trapped in there. Now, you say, do you feel it? You feel it? The guy says, yes, he does. And then the magician tears it in half, just like this. And there you go. You know, Nate Leipzig was unconventional in virtually everything that he did. He didn't hold a die like most magicians between the first finger and the thumb. He held it over here like this between the first finger and the second finger. And he, he actually used two little dice in a little case. And then he would take, say, the five and he'd revolve it over and put it down on his hand like this so there's no way that that five could change. He'd give it a little rub like this and only one spot was left. Magicians are used to performing with all kinds of common objects, like, say, balls. We'll lose these things. But Leipzig and Silent Moore did it a little bit different. You see, they pushed that ball right down in there like that. And son of a gun, it was still gone. Let's talk about Nate Leipzig's opener. Let's say that I riffle down here with my thumb, you stop me. This is a card that you've chosen. You take that one. I give the cards a couple of cuts here. And then Leipzig would show the card in a kind of peculiar way. He'd snap it off like that. He'd say, is that your card, the seven of spades? You'd say, no. Uh, he'd say, how about the eight of diamonds? No, it's put your hand out flat, perfectly flat. Look, like this, perfectly flat. Got it? Okay, he put the cards down onto the spectator's hand, uh, usually a lady, and she'd turn it over, and there would be her card. The important thing to remember here is that at no time during this trick is the spectator asked to name his card, except at the very end, they just asked, is that your card? Let's try it again with uh, a card sticking out. Let's just say, that's your card. Here, we'll stick it in here so we can't find it. Make sure everything's squared up. Well, it'll be hard to find. I bet I could still find it, but too late now. It's lost in the pack. Give the cards a little shuffle. And then Leipzig would apparently do the thing, the same thing again. He would say, is this your card? Jack of spades, you'd say no. He'd say, how about the jack of diamonds? Is that your card? No, we'd have the person now put out both hands in a kind of cupped manner, and then just do this very quickly. Again, the card was not named, but the card was found. We have a little bonus item. It's a little bit like uh, something Leipzig would do. It's Di Vernon's coin production, and it's just like this. Bye-bye. One of the things that Di Vernon often performed at the Magic Castle was uh, Leipzig's vanish of a coin, in the, using the coin fold. Now, this is familiar to magicians, but like everything else, Leipzig had a different way of doing it. And uh, we're going to use a kind of stiff piece of paper because whenever I saw the professor do it, he always was trying to do it with a castle napkin, and it didn't work out very well. But the key to this, and the way Leipzig presented it, 
he'll take the coin and he'll place it in there and he would let the person touch it. Now you, you squ ask him, can you squeeze that? you feel it? Yeah. yeah. So the guy says, yes, yes, I feel it. And uh, fold it again over this way so that the coin is trapped. You feel it? The guy feels it. Yes, yes, I feel it. Now, fold it again like this. Do this right now the person feels it so he knows it's it's actually in there so now they fold it fold it one more time strap it can you feel it you feel it yes the guy feels it i'm sure it's in there you feel it yes yes it is well here's a hard part when you get old you can't tear it <laughs> Shit. anyway it's gone